this episode of how to defend yourself with a stick. We're using the self-defense cane or we're going over cane self-defense again. This is a beginner video. I'm also gonna show you some intermediate things, some things you can do no matter what your fitness level, your age, your ability level is to start. Everything we do standing with this cane, all the fighting techniques, all the defensive techniques, everything you do while you're standing, you also do while you're sitting, and that includes this warm up. Start with your cane in your hand. The long side is going to come out of your palm, and you're going to twist it forward. This is just a basic warm up spin. This gets the joints lubricated, keeps you safe from injury during this workout. Now, pull your stomach up and in, keep your abs tight, shoulders back and down. After you do this for about 30 seconds in one hand, you're going to start to come across the body and back. To start to move your wrists, your elbows, everything through that ro minor rotation. It's going to get everything loosened up and strengthen all of your joints for impact. Getting you ready for those hard striking motions no matter how you hit. You're going to go across the body and back, warming up, stomach up and in, abs tight, morning. And you can also do it seated or sitting in the chair. This is really important because you keep asking me, you know, where you're starting. Do you have anything a little bit slower for seniors? Was one of the comments or questions. And the answer is absolutely. Sit down if you have to sit down. If you can stand up, stand. If you want to, break it up. Sit for some of it, stand for some of it. But you can do the same warm up spin across the body and back. Just keep this hand up and in. Put it in the other hand. Same thing for 30 seconds, you're just cranking forward and all that is, is your hand is here, it's closed, it's not squeezing, but it's closed so it doesn't come out. You're bringing that to the front of your body, stomach up and in, shoulders back and down, and over and back, standing or sitting. So wherever you are, wherever you stand, it doesn't have to be this fast either. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Going this speed, this rate, will also do what I want it to do for you, which is warm up your body, start to strengthen the hands, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, and engage your core in a way. When you go into a self-defense position, whether you're moving fast or you're moving more slowly, you're going to be focusing on basic strikes, basic blocks, basic moves. If you can move fast, you'll be able to move fast. If you can't move as fast yet, you don't need to move as fast yet. You need to have a nice stable position though, whether you're standing or again, sitting. This works on all of those. So doing these warm up exercises starts to get that for you. Now the second thing you're gonna do, see where I'm holding it here? I'm not on the crook. I'm up a little bit or that hook. I'm gonna turn my hand down and bring it back. And I'm gonna start to carve that sideways figure eight with my thumb. You're carving your figure eight with your hand closed this time. And your hand is closed because you want to start to lengthen and shorten. Lengthen and shorten all of the tendons, the muscles, lubricate the joints, build power and flexibility in your hands, your wrists, your arms, your shoulders. Now from here, I strike real basic strikes, right? Coming forward, here, here, straight across, horizontally, high or low into the legs, you can do a vertical strike down, and all of it requires a little bit of strength coming from here, or a lot of strength. And this is gonna give you that lot of strength. Just turning back and forth. So this is the second kind of spinning. You can do this spinning, the beginning as your warm up, you hear how fast that goes, and then you move your hand up a little bit, and you do the second kind of spinning and for 30 seconds per hand. After you do it here, just put it in the other hand. Same thing, going down. Just think of two, two circles, right? One circle coming inside and one circle coming outside. This one goes down and forward. This one goes down and back. They both go in the same way. They're just different sides of your body. I'll show you maybe from another angle from here to here. This hand is always up, stomach up and in. And again, you need to be sitting in a chair. Same thing works. You're gonna get the same value, same benefit. It's gonna engage your core, it's gonna improve your posture, improve your overall health. Meaning, 
strength, flexibility, endurance, and mobility, your ability to move around. Now that's the second spin forward, and then I want you to just simply put it back in the other hand and reverse it, pulling up and pulling up. This is what it looked like going forward, and think of slicing and slicing, 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 one, going down. The second one is more that coming up motion, coming up motion. So you're pulling it up here and here, and where should your feet be? Just under your body. Pulling it up, twisting and turning. For about 30 seconds, put it in the other hand, and you're gonna do the same thing. I saw a comment I wanted to see, see if I could get that comment. Oh, maybe not. Pull it up. If you had a question, put it in there, I just missed it. Pull it up, or something you'd like me to respond to. Pull it up, pulling up this way. 30 seconds, other hand is always up. And now I want you to engage the muscles in the legs. And the reason you're gonna do that is all of your strikes come off of the floor. Meaning that whether you're punching or you're kicking, or in this case, striking with your cane, your self-defense stick, it's all coming through your legs. And if you're seated, it's all coming through your core. So both of these exercises when I start to do this squatting motion, and I'm down and up, and I'm assisting, you're gonna assist yourself by using your hands on the hook of your cane. You're going down and up, down and up, and there's a little pushing here, so you're getting a little bit of the whole body into this exercise. Your heart rate is gonna to start to rise. You're gonna do this for 30 seconds. Just turn your feet out like a duck, a little bit wider than your shoulders. And if you're older or you're less mobile, this is gonna to start to improve your mobility. Now, if you're in a chair and you're not able to do the legs, but maybe you can stand up and sit down. Stand up if you're able to stand. If you're able to, do that. That's, a be that's better than nothing, right? It's not just better than nothing, it gets you to the next level. Eventually, you'll be able to stay up and down. So modify it if you have to. Do that for 30 seconds because each part of this exercise, once you get your heart rate back up, so you start to lean out while building power in your core. Now, put the right foot in front of the left. You're gonna have the crook or the hook facing behind you. So your hand's here. I'm gonna show you both ways how to use it today. From here, you're leaning on it. I want you to step forward and bring it up. When you bring it up, it's gonna slide down in your hand. From here, I'm gonna step into the attack in this case. I'm gonna imagine this bag, let me see, let me get that back into the screen or the camera a little bit. So we're gonna call this bag the threat. Your cane is here, you're gonna step up and into the threat. You allow it to slide a little bit. And the basic idea is you wanna put the stick between you and the opponent, you and the threat. From here, I'm just turning my body you're gonna turn your body to make your body a smaller target. And you can see that the stick is between me and you, me and you, the threat, and we'll say you're the threat in this case. And the reason is I wanna interrupt your line of sight. I wanna make you move around to be able to see me, to hit me, to stab me with a knife. That's what I wanna do here. I interrupt that line of sight and the stick doesn't bleed. If it is a knife, the stick is not gonna break. If the guy's trying to punch and he runs into your stick, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna hurt, you're not gonna feel it. If anything, it's going to hurt him, it's going to stop him, and then you're already there. You're ready to defend yourself immediately. We want immediate, direct, and explosive when we talk about practical self-defense. Self-defense with a cane or cane self-defense with a walking stick, walking cane, it's all the same. Basic principles are get the cane between you and the threat, right? So from here, your, your uh, weight is on it a little bit, and you step in. I'm going to lower the camera just a little bit because I think that might assist in being able to see more what's going on in the lower part. From here, I step into it. Now, if you're in the chair, I'm just gonna show you a couple of these in the chair today, because I don't always do the whole workout from the chair, but here in person, not only do I teach it sitting down, so I'll teach you sitting down if you come here and you work out with me, I also practice myself, because it doesn't necessarily represent a wheelchair. It could re represent a bus, station seat. I could be waiting for the bus. I could be waiting for the subway or I could be on the bus or on the subway on the airplane. 
You can take this everywhere you go. So I'm sitting here, and I need to now practice. And it's the same thing. With the, while I'm standing, I'm gonna step into it. Or if you feel more comfortable, step back a little bit. I like to close the distance between me and you. So that gives me more options and takes away options from you. I'm gonna come into you like this, right? See that hook? This is the oak training cane, the dojo cane that I love to use. It's very it's nice weight, it's nice and heavy. Hits extremely hard. You know when that hits, that hits an arm, hits a rib, that's gonna break something, right? So you practice with this, you practice with the tool you're gonna to carry. Not the one you carry every single day, but something that's like it. So I have an everyday carry cane. It's a little bit prettier than this, but it's made out of the same material. Step in, and then you're able to immediately respond to the threat. And this is something I've been thinking about lately. Um, the second shutdown's coming. Not for everybody, hopefully not for you, and hopefully not for me, because I honestly don't know how many businesses are gonna survive if they shut everything down again. But it's coming, it's already in Europe, it's already in a lot of places. And people are gonna uh, continue to feel desperate. People, uh, violence is continuing to go up. Um, violent crime, a lot of knife crime, knife crime is going up. And you might not be able to carry a gun or something, but maybe you have this as an option. And this is better than this. He has a knife, I have this. These can come off very fast, right? All of this bleeds, all of this gets cut, I can't use it. From here, he can nick this up all he wants or two or three of them. I continue to fight, strike, rake that hook straight across his face, stick that here through the throat, right through his face, right through his eyes for self-defense. So this is definitely an option. But I keep having this idea, another shutdown might be coming. The second shutdown coming, it's better to prepare than panic. This is preparation. Practicing with your daily carry, your everyday carry or your walking cane is preparation for what might be coming and hopefully it never comes but it's better to be prepared that's the whole point if you don't prepare you have to panic that's your only option left you're walking down the street you're caught off guard they're surrounding you they're saying things they got a big skateboard guy's got a frozen uh, water bottle another one has a, a big brick this is all you have <laughs> you don't want to be there but you have to and so this is better than nothing and this is way better than nothing because you have distance, you're creating distance between you and the threat, and then you just have a wicked, fast, powerful, hard strike, no matter what your level is, you don't have to move extremely fast, you can, from here, you can turn it, and you can push, and so your, your goal is to go for nose, eyes, teeth, knock the teeth straight down their throat for self-defense, smash them in the eyes, you take away their ability to see you uh, temporarily or permanently, you go through here, you go through here, smash their nose, blood's coming out, they can't catch their breath, you run away, right? Or you walk away. Maybe you aren't able to run. You aren't able to move as fast, but you have this, that gives you some options. This gives you options. That, striking that, can you hear that? <laughs> right across, think of that little beveled edge, right? Right behind the mandibular joint, in through the jaw, in through the ear, in through the eyes, smashing off the nose, coming through, taking out some of the teeth, or even doing more permanent damage, coming in this way, this part, coming in that way, into the solar plexus or the sternum, this big knuckle. That's how I like to think of that. That's like, think of this, you can think of this as hooking and pulling, right? But I was shown, Cane Masters, this is a Cane Masters cane, um, uh, Master Keith Melton, who, owns Cane Masters and is their best spokesperson because that guy's the more, most passionate caner I've ever met. The most passionate, you know, in the caner universe, caner world, of all the different cane styles, cane self-defense, cane foo, American self-defense, cane Gary Hernandez. Gary Hernandez is also a very passionate caner. He's uh, Master Gary Hernandez. If you haven't seen his channel, go check it out. But Master Keith Melton, who makes these, designs these, comes up with these great ideas, keeps them legal for you so you can carry them wherever you go. He said, take that thing. He said, hold it like this, facing out, go right into the right into the groin, right? And then up across the body for self-defense. So from here, I bring it straight up. I can bring it up and across this way. One, two, one. That's a good way to practice, right? 30 seconds doing this over and over. You're gonna get used to the way it feels. 
you're also going to build core power. Can you do it sitting from here? I'm standing, sitting here waiting on the bus. Boom, straight up, right between the legs. Very obvious. Nothing fancy. No uh, grab, twist, pull, reach, twist this way, go down to the ground, do a little dance and a jump kick. All that stuff is great. It's fun to think about, but I'm talking about from here, straight up here, straight up here. I want practical. I want what works. I want immediate, direct, and explosive. And I want you to think about targets. I haven't seen the loft stand, strand crutch, but I will look it up. Someone asked me recently about the one with the, the three or the four prongs in the bottom. I'm not sure. Is it three or four? Everything else is pretty much similar. This is more straight. By the way, I was going to ask Keith Melton if he could make one that's like this, but has that um, I, can't, I can't forget what it's called. It just has more uh, points of contact on the ground, so you're more stable. But yes, it works with all that. It works with a hiking stick. The difference is this, you're allowed to take everywhere you go. Yeah, like the claw that's on the bottom. All that works. Can you imagine that big claw? And some of you have seen what I'm talking about. That uh, cane that people have to use. And they have to use and it has more stability because it has those four points. And then all of a sudden, they take that big, it's like a big gnarly fist made out of steel, right? Steel or aluminum. You bring that right up between the legs for self-defense. Or you bring it up and across the body for self-defense. And see, I'm doing it with one hand, the other hand's down. I'm just showing you that it can be done in any way. No way is wrong. There's no way to do this stuff wrong. Uh, as long as it works. And it, again, if you prepare, you don't have to panic. If you are practicing with your cane, and it doesn't have to be fast, but it should be at least every other day if you don't have time. And if you don't have a lot going on, make time for every day. Make time for every day because just moving with your cane is going to, you're going to start to get faster. You're going to start to hit harder. And it's more important than that. You're going to start to convince yourself in your brain because you're seeing yourself being successful. You have to see yourself being successful. And when you started, you're like, there's no way I can do that. There's no way, oh, I'll never get that good. Or I'm not that fast. It doesn't work. You might think that. We all do things like that. And then you start because you're never going to get, you're never going to get anywhere if you don't start, right? So super plateau, uh, cliche, but you know what I mean? Platitude. That's what we're talking about. But you start to do this a little bit or you're in your chair and you start to do this, or you start to practice striking. You start to practice shoving them out of your face. You start to practice standing up, striking, and sitting down. You start to practice sitting like this, and then strike. Bring it up straight through here. Put two hands on it. Push them back. Pull two hands on it like this if you're doing a push-up. Shove them back. Hit them right down the middle. Go across horizontally. You can practice all that stuff, and then you start to see yourself and you realize, oh, you can do it. You are getting fast. You are getting stronger. And that's the whole point of training, prepare or panic. So back to this one. I want you to step into this position and practice this angular strike. Think of, this is my right hand. Think of my right shoulder, my left hip. I'm in this position. Here comes the threat. I see it before it gets here. And I step up and I give a verbal command. Back up, stay back, whatever it is, loud and clear. It's a command, not a request. You're not going to ask them. You're not going to say, oh, please. You're going to say, get out of my face. I will defend myself. Your hand is here. And then striking. Now, I would say like moving and striking, right? But I said this before. You don't have to be that fast. It's great if you are. You've got good footwork. Amazing. The legs don't work as well. The body doesn't work as well. If that's, for, if that's you, that's where you are. There's nothing wrong with that. It still works. From here, better position. Don't step in, step back. And then you just interrupt the line of sight. They can't see you. And practice now so you don't have to panic later. Practice is preparation. Practice this nice, tight angle. And when I say tight, I mean fight behind your stick. When you do st any kind of stick fighting, and this is stick fighting, right? It's just a stick with a hook. Stick fighting, any kind of stick fighting, Always fight behind your stick, right? Meaning don't do this. <laughs> this is it's too wide. You're wide open here. Fight here and then bring that other angle and then put them together. One, two. I'm trying to move out of the way of the bag. One, 
two, one, two, one, and then add the third angle, turn your palm up and bring it up the other way. At the beginning we warmed up like this, and we warmed up with the reverse. That's just disguising repetition for these strikes. So I have two angles down, two angles up, add a horizontal strike with the palm facing the ceiling when you come from the right to the left, and then when you come from the left to the right, palm facing the floor. Bring it across. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh will be straight down the middle, right on the top of the head. And again, this oak staff, this super hard staff, you're right. And you know what? It's not just in your head, Greg. It's a fact. The uh, uh, FBI that keeps the statistics in the United States of crime, they know, they've studied it. They say that people who use an assistive device, whether it's a chair or a cane, a walker, uh, crutches, they know that attacks go up on that population and your population by like 22%. You're 22% more likely to be a victim of a violent attack because you are seen as being less abled to defend yourself. And so you're absolutely right, but you're changing, you're changing the story. You're writing your own narrative. You're writing your own ending to the story. You can think of all the bad things that could happen, or you can think about all the ways you're going to defend yourself. So now, yes, you have your disability device. You have the medical device you're allowed to take anywhere and everywhere you go. And there are two laws that protect you in this country, in the United States. And the first one, oh, I'm awesome today. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been so busy, so busy trying to scratch the earth and make a dollar. I mean, that's that's, uh, that, that's the fact, right? Trying to keep the lights on, worry about the second wave, or second, no, I'm not worried about the second wave, I gotta be honest. The second shutdown, they're gonna try to shut everything down again for whatever crazy reason. Don't fight the reason, it doesn't matter the reason, you don't have that power. They're gonna shut us down again, people get more desperate, small businesses, more jobs go away, more people, violent crime is going way, way up. Gray had a good point. If you need this and you walk around with it, people see you as a target, now your shoulders are backing down, your stomach's opening, and your chin's back a little bit. They see you as a target, they come up and you're, you step into a protected position. You interrupt their line of sight. Or maybe, like Keith Melton says from Cane Masters, maybe you're carrying it like this, which is ergonomically stronger, better for you. And then the guy comes up and closes distance fast. Have you been reading this, the, like the report? Reports in the big cities, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, all the violent crime. And who are they going after? The 29-year-old woman attacking the 73-year-old veteran who's just holding a flag or whatever. And who cares what his politics are or her politics, but some young punk coming up, taking advantage of someone's frailty. That's what we're talking about. But this is the game changer, right? All of a sudden, this gives you options. This gives you length. Create the distance. Keep them back. And this gives you a very hard, powerful strike. In the fight, you don't want to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, bouncing, bobbing, and weaving, right? Butterfly spin or whatever. You don't want to be doing all that stuff. You want to bring it to a conclusion as fast as possible. If you could take this, stick that right up between the legs and the groin, and drop them to the floor, that's awesome. That's all you need. You don't need a hook, twist, grab, pull to the ground, put it around their neck, Sweep the leg up, turn them, come up the other side. We want to keep it super practical so that it works, so it's effective for you. The first time when you're talking about cane self-defense. All right, so good morning. Back to this position. I've got it here. I'm going to slide it up to here. I'm leaning on it. I'm going to pull it up. Now, from here, when I step in and close distance with you, and I tell you to back up, I'm also going to stick this in your line of sight. So again, you have to look around me. You're not gonna punch my cane. The threat is not gonna stab your cane. They're trying to stick that in you and take everything from you, your dignity, your life, your ability to move around, uh, about your life without uh, somebody else abusing you, right? So you're here, here comes the threat, and you're like, back up. You can step in, close the distance, step back, increase the distance. Step in or step back. Either way, you're going from here to here, which is why, again, I like you to do this. It's cross training, it's preparation, it's building calluses all over your hands so that when you use your cane, 
It's like your fingers have their own brain. Your palm knows exactly where that is in space and time. And that comes from all of this, I had to dip back way, comes from all of this spinning and across the body and back. Yeah, of course it would. If lifting the cane, if you need the cane for balance, if lifting it would cause you to be unstable, yeah. And, and if it would cause you to fall, then don't do it. Don't do it. You can use the cane for, for balance here and work on your punch, which is part of this workout, right? Use your stand like this, bring your hand up, learn how to guard your head, guard punch this way, block this side, block this side, block this side, block this side. I know Marshall, I have two, uh, two mentors of mine growing up. One had polio as a child, and then one side of his leg is, one side is like six inches shorter than the other leg. And the whole left side is, it was, it was not as developed because the polio, his entire left hand, he would, uh, and he, he was a master of martial arts, he was a fighter, a great fighter. And I know I told this story to somebody, but he tucked his, his hand or his thumb, I forget which one, tucked it into his, yeah, take it, grab the cane, you're allowed to bring it with you wherever you go. He tucked his uh, hand in here and he would bounce, he would fight, and he would throw kicks and punches with his good leg and his good side, and he beat most people. He beat me all the time. He was, he was an excellent fighter. He was fast, he was powerful, but he wasn't born that way. He was born and then he got polio as a child back when a lot of polio was going around, and he grew up with a major, major, everybody say that's a major disability. He, didn't, he said, I never thought of it as a disability. I just thought I was different. And, and that's how you've got to train your brain. Not good, not bad, different. It's just different. So he's different, so he finds a way to fight with one hand. You can find a way. This hand is on the cane. This hand's here. Strike with that hand. Palm strike with that hand. Stick those fingers in his eyes. You don't need a lot of power either. Stick it right in his throat. Stick your thumb like this, right in their throat. throat. The gag reflex kicks in. There's no way they can stop you. They're not pushing into that. It's instinctive because the body knows that gets crushed, they're dead, right? So there are all kinds of things that you do with one cane. It's just finding different ways to convince yourself that it's not, your, your disability is not good, it's not bad, it just makes you a little bit different. So since it's different, what are you going to do in a different way? That's all it is. It's not a problem, right? And if you need help, reach out to me personally. Go to Pasquinelli.com and there's a contact box there. Send me an email. Or send me a contact, that'll start the whole email thread. Ask me any question you want. If I don't know, I'll ask somebody who knows a lot more than me. And trust me, there are a lot of people out there that know a lot more than I do. We could get uh, Grandmaster Gary Hernandez. I keep promoting people in rank. He's probably a Grandmaster. Gary Hernandez, I think he's over in Sarasota. He's on the uh, Gulf Coast down here in beautiful, sunny Florida. But he and I talk from time to time. And if I don't know something, I ask him. So we're leaning here against the cane and you bring it up through the middle, you bring it up here, or you bring it up in this position. Now in this position, I told you before, this is like a big knuckle. This big knuckle, I want you first to think of immediate direct and explosive. What's the closest distance between two lines is a straight line, close between two points is a straight line. Is that the saying something like that, right? From here, this hand is up in a protected position if you're able to, this hand goes straight in. Your elbow just straightens, your elbow straightens, and this big knuckle goes right into a soft spot. Go for something soft. Solar plexus would be perfect. Um, his nose, his big squishy fat nose, maybe that would be right into his nose. Uh, from here or straight up here. By the way, is it controversy or is it just we all need to learn more? That's why I let go of my strong opinions. I try to anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I'm wrong half the time, right? As uh, my mentor, Dan Pena says, um, I might be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. That just means confidence, like act like you know, not act like you know, uh, speak truth to what you know is true, but be open that your truth might not be the, the, oh, the last truth. There might be 10 truths. So I'm standing here, I come in here. There's my first strike. Here's the second one. Just using the back of that hand coming through this way, right? I can bring it through here, and then I grab it, jab through, or it comes through here, and bring it back this way, sweeping. That's like a Joe technique from the, uh, the Aikijo, the Joe staff, the middle size staff, right? So from here, 
I pop it up. Practice this, straight in, let it slide down a little bit, create some length there, let it come back, put your other hand on it, step through, and really drive. Drive through his face for self-defense. Step here, strike, bring your back, angle strike, step here, and then straight through the face. And a lot of these, it depends on where you live. Do you live in the United States? You're allowed to use things as a walking stick, but I'm pretty sure, uh, don't quote me, the, 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 you want the definitive answer, go to canemasters.com, and he's got the definitive answers. This, that's, that's, that's enough to start with. This has to be there, the hook, right? So the answer I would say is you can use the staff to get around, and probably most people aren't going to challenge you with it, especially if they see that you need it. But if you get a cane like this, this gives you some more of those, just some more options. And if you were me, if I were you, I don't know how that, we say that, right? I would train with both. I would learn how to use the, the, the bow, which it sounds like you already know how to do. And then this is just an extension of the bow. It's the same basic weapon, by the way, and I hate to constantly, I'm all over the place today, but practice this. These, uh, the fingers, the extensors and flexors, thank you for that. But the extensors and flexors need to be lubricated and need to be, the, the hand needs to be opened a lot. And this spinning through your fingers is a great way to not just improve your, your uh, flexibility and mobility as you age, it helps with your brain elasticity, keeping you young up here. And the, the thing most people don't understand is this is like a universal truth that goes back since the beginning of man. Um, if you exercise the brain, you're also going to improve the body. And the opposite is true. And it's, you know, for years in this country, when they talk about yoga, they talk about mind body connection. I always think body mind, probably because I don't think as much as other people do or as they do. I think body mind, move the body and you improve the mind. But we know for a fact that, yeah, I, I you know, well, we can still get the, get the training done. But I like to think that um, when you increase flexibility, in the body, you increase flexibility here. I mean, I don't, don't like to think that. That's a fact. That's truth. And, and so think about it. Think about like living a long, engaged, happy, more rewarding life, no matter who you are or where you're starting from. And if you have more flexibility in your thinking and you can let go of more anger, more frustration, more fear, and, and, and see the world around you for what it really is, that gives you so many more options. That flexibility in your thinking comes from training flexibility in your body. So from here, let's go back to the first way, holding it here, and I want to review those seven angles, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I want you to add this bayonet strike, think of a bayonet strike, and then switch feet to the other hand. Bring it up, go through seven angles, two, three, four, five, six, down, grab it at the end and strike, and then add an eighth, which is now this rifle butt strike. And think again, soft spots, pushing back. It's either going to kill the person for self-defense if you need to, or at least it's going to move them out of your face. There's no way they can push against that, right? From here, it's the same thing. They come up, they close the distance, they're too close, you bring it up, and you bring this down, just scrape it across his face. Think about removing their nose, some of their teeth. Get it down to your chest, and this is extremely powerful. From here... Just push it straight in. Oh, I just noticed I'm wearing one of these, these new shirts I got. I got a bunch of these to try them out. It's on the, the link below. This is, uh, I don't really like the way, see how it's like ironed on? So I'm going to make these in, um, some of you have been asking me for shirts. This is the new school down here, Quantum Martial Arts, where we're training right now. I'm going to get these made in uh, silk screen. I don't like that look. It looks kind of cheesy, right? Um, anyway, so from here, facing out. Slide it up, you've got strike, back, strike, support it with the other hand, bring it through, and then jab. And see how my hands are kind of like opposite, facing each other this way? There's this grip, and then from here, when I go to strike, there's this grip, like that push-up grip. So both ways are going to work. Yeah, here's the new move for the week. So start with the crook facing the crook. Facing the crook. Uh, or the, the gang of punks, thugs, whatever. Bring straight up 
into the groin, right between the legs. Super powerful, fast. Bring it back, up and across, and follow through. Put the other hand on it, and drive that hand straight through the side of their face. Bring it back into this. See how I'm just pushing here? Boom. And see that my hands are in this position. And then practice the other way, the seven strikes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then add that bayonet attack, turn, rifle butt attack in, and just shove it straight in. And if you want to, break this guy's ribs, break that guy's ribs. Practice that. That's a really good starting number of uh, strikes, right? And again, don't move fast. If you can't move fast, don't move fast. If you can't stand, don't stand. Do every single bit of this. Let me drop this. Well, no, let's keep them up. We'll say the guy comes up to you. You're sitting in your chair. You're either at the bus stop or you're in a wheelchair. There we go. Hope you didn't get too nauseous there. But you're sitting. Minding your own business, trying to, um, you know, go about your day, live your life with freedom. And all of a sudden, the punk's in your face. So from here, if your crook is facing out, you might be sitting like this, pop it up, back up. From here, there's that first strike, right into the solar plexus. Bring it back, striking up and across. Bring it here, striking through this way, strike down like that. If your hand is in the other position, this is my favorite, by the way. From here, one, two, three, four. There's a horizontal strike, horizontal straight down the middle. See, I can reach the top of his head, and then here, instead of going through his face or his throat, stick it in his groin. Here, other side, here, and then if they close the distance, they get right up in your face, hands on your neck, right there, right here. Bring this down right on their arms. If their hands are here, and you bring that down, that pulls them in this position. All the nerves here. If you've ever done uh, law enforcement come along techniques, you know how much this hurts. Their hands, let's say, their hands are on you. And you bring your, here. All of a sudden their face is coming down and then you shove their face up and back. See how much power I've got? And it's not, it's not just that I practice so I'm strong. It's that the technique makes my uh, strong strike stronger. So you might not be as strong as I am now. You might be stronger. But from here, I went from one hand to two hands. I pull this here. Think of, especially if you're in a chair, think of how many times you pull your body up. You pull your body up and out. You're very strong in this position. Most of you are very strong in this position if that's what you do. So from here to here, that's what this is. Now imagine, I wish I had a partner to show you here. I need to get somebody. I need a partner. If you're in uh, town, and I know T, your, T was talking about coming down. He's in town. We were with T. But if you're around, I would love, I need to build my team down here. I need more people in the school every day. See that? It just pulls them down. So you pull them down. They come in. You shove your straight this way. Aim that. And you don't have to have a lot of power for this <laughs> to make them want to, get out of your face if you rake that across their face. You don't have to be able to generate tons of force. You don't need a lot. Put that in their neck. Put that right there behind that joint. Put that in their ear. Put that on their head. Put that in their neck. Reach up and put it in the back of their shoulder. All these nerves. Have you ever got a, like a tight shoulder? Well, you know what it feels like. It's a lot of nerves there. And then again, you're doing this. You're pulling your, it's like you're pulling yourself up. You're very strong in this position. You have to remember, so all of this stuff, anytime you're using a martial arts cane for self-defense or a cane, you're using cane techniques, they're based on using what you have in leverage against the opponent. You're either redirecting their energy, so you're taking their superior force and you're turning it back around onto them. Yes, you can do that. Or you're using things in a way, because I teach effectively, self, effective self-defense, practical self-defense to children. And when the children do it right, and I'm off guard. Uh, hello to Quebec. Um, sorry, my, my, my French isn't good. Or I would say hello in French. You pull it in. 
But even the little kids, if they do the technique properly, it's not about how strong you are, how fast you are. Self-defense should never be a competitive match, force against force. That's not what it's about. Yeah, I can't even, bonjour, thank you. I couldn't even come up with it. We, my kids and I, we practice uh, Spanish on the way to school every morning. So Spanish, we practice all the time. My son's really fascinated with French, though. So we practice French every once in a while, but like every week or so. But I don't know why bonjour, bonjour didn't come into my head. All right. Uh, the point is this. You don't have to use superior speed, superior power, superior technique, force. That's what ruined um, the self-defense industry with martial arts. Martial artists have been teaching self-defense for years, have no idea what they're talking about. Because we imagine, well, it's like a fight. It's just a fight. It's not. It has nothing to do with a fight. It's violence. It's violence. Self-defense is violence. So, uh, and the attack is violence. Someone using violence to hurt you, to take something from you. And that's not the same as a Taekwondo match, as a boxing match. It's not even the same as ground and pound UFC in the cage. The guy up and his teeth out of his face and his, his ears all missing and stuff. It's, not the, it's still not the same. Especially now. Now it's because it's the 79-year-old man being attacked by the 29-year-old punk who sees him as a target. And so you don't, it's, he's not going to get in a boxing match. You know, you'll see stories every once in a while where they picked on the wrong grandpa because there was a, uh, one about a granny, ninja granny, recently in the news. Probably you've, some of you have seen that. And she uh, beat the snot out of this guy. But they, I think the first thing she picked up was like a baseball bat or a cane. And, and that's how she softened him up a little bit. And then she could put her jitsu into him. And that's how this stuff works. And I'm not saying you can't use the jitsu, you can't use the tar techniques, but you're using leverage and smarts against stupidity, really, but against the violent attack. And so you're thinking about, like, what are the targets? The eyes, the nose, the mouth. You're not thinking about, you know, bob and weave, switch and moves, uh, stick the jab, stick the jab. You're not thinking about round kicks and, and knees and flying knees and flying elbows. You're thinking about using a stick, which increases distance, which doesn't bleed when it gets cut, which um, doesn't feel pain. And you're using that stick to create massive amounts of damage to compress flesh and break bones whether it's cane master's cane or cane fu cane it's the same it's the same principles principles over techniques techniques are all there learn all the techniques these are techniques these strikes this is a technique learn all the techniques you can but understand principles win the self-defense fight principle pay attention to what's happening around you number one situational awareness pay attention to what's happening while it's happening situational awareness requires that you use whatever you can, listen, look, think, what's happening around me, where's the potential threat, be ready, prepare or panic. Number two, get in a better position. This is a better position. This is a better position, right? Putting the stick between their eyes so they can't see me and they gotta move around me. Number three, and give a verbal command. It's always part of it. Back up, get away from me. Alert somebody else, help them come. Alert all those punks with the cameras who are videotaping it, or all the security cameras, and when they see it, it looks like you're trying to defend yourself. That doesn't look threatening. It should look a little threatening because you are. Back up, I'll defend myself. But the other guy's got the knife, he's got the chunk of concrete. Maybe he's one of those punks with the, you heard about the skateboards? They just pick up their skateboard and they threaten people. Who? It's a 20, 20 year old kid. It's a 29, it, it's like, it's a weird age. It's like 25 to 39 these younger people and they're trying to impose their will on people and it's a grandma and a grandpa eating their dinner having a nice little glass of wine a guy comes up drinks it spits in it laughs in their face throws their plate off the thing and when the guy's like what's wrong with you young man and he picks up his skateboard <laughs> can you picture it i've pictured it a million times and then i sat in a chair with my cane and i prepared for it i practiced for it what happens? A kid comes up, hey, back away from my table. We're enjoying our dinner. <laughs> I have a right to defend myself with my big cane. And I'm only half joking. Because I want you to get yourself into the mental ability to speak up for yourself and to give the command. Because somebody's got to stand up against some of these things. My point is, it's the, it's, it, people are going, they're, they're making, as like Greg said at the beginning, they're, they're, go they're only going to pick on people they think that aren't going to fight back. They're only gonna pick on people they think if they do fight back, they're gonna crush them. You're not gonna be that person. 
They picked on the wrong person. And not because you're some super ninja who can flip and spin and jump and twist and kick, but because you have some basic, basic techniques and you understand principles, situational awareness, getting a better position, telling them to back off. And then think about what are your targets that you're gonna remove or destroy? Their eyesight, their ability to breathe per, or temporarily, temporarily, permanently, temporarily, their ability to reach out and touch you or stab you or punch you or hit you with a skateboard because you've broken their arms and their bones or you've destroyed them in a way that they can't move them. You hit the nerves, right? You're taking that away. You're removing that. That's the question that you ask yourself. And then number four is just all in. Fight's not over till you win. It's commitment for self-defense. From here, number one, situation awareness, pay attention. Number two, better position, back up, verbal command. Number three, what are my targets? His eyes, their operating system, right? You hit them there, knock them out, turn off their operating system. The cops come and scoop them up, like take them where they should be. You go home safe, you're the hero in the local paper because it said that you were uh, minding your own business and um, you were the obvious target for the punk, but they didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know that you knew how to do some basic things. And I want basics, basics, basics. I'll, I'll teach you all that cool stuff that you do with a hook and the cane, you pull them around and you twist and you put them in the pressure point and the come along technique. All that stuff is super cool and super awesome. Good, yeah, I'm getting ready to do a cane one today. But I want you first to know how to practically, immediate direct explosive. Immediate means don't wait, right? If you can hit him first, you know that you don't have a choice, you go first. Don't let the other guy go first. Don't let the group you know, throw the thing and hopefully you're gonna survive the first strike. You know it's imminent. You know that it's unavoidable. You did everything you could. You tried to talk to yourself. You tried not to be there, but you were caught off guard. You're not a bad person. He's a bad person. And you said, back up. And then, because you already thought about it. Took a deep breath. Prepared, and then you full commitment. Number four is all in. As hard as you can, trying to end the fight for self-defense. Every single strike. Every single move you make. Now, I did want, and I just remember this. Before I go, because you asked me specifically, and this also goes into the idea if you're not as physically fit as you were before, either because you have some injury in life or you were born that way, or some disability, some other ability, however you want to call it, um, or you just want to be stronger because you really do take your self-defense seriously. You're your first responder. You're the first, you're responsible for the safety of yourself and your family first. Yeah, the cops are coming. Hopefully they'll take care of it. But what if they're five minutes out? You got five minutes to fight, and I want you to be fighting fit. So from here, you're gonna take one of these bands, and I'll put the link below after we're done if you wanna come back and look for it. But take one of these bands. This is just a resistance band. This one says 65 pounds or whatever, and you're gonna put this in front of your body, and then you reach behind, or if you can't reach as well, I get in the habit, especially when I'm really sore, I swing it behind, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, John. John, it's good to see you, by the way. And then look, that's all that is. Just behind my back. I move it somewhere toward the middle. And then I'm going to do a standing push-up. Your elbows should be close to your body. If your elbows are out, you're going to feel it a lot in your shoulders. It might hurt if your shoulders aren't strong. So keep your elbows in. This is a better way to do push-ups, by the way. And just push straight two three four i'm just and you want to go for full extension and i want you to do this don't go for a number of times go for 30 seconds right and after 30 seconds your chest no matter what the weight is we need what's called time under tension especially as you age go for time under tension instead of just massive weight Time under tension is going to get you where you need to be chemically. That means it's going to lean your body out. It's also going to give you explosive power. Then after 30 seconds rest, no more than a minute, you're going to keep your rest super short. I like to rest for 30 seconds. And now I'm going to go elbows in straight down. Just like I'm pushing on a, as if I were standing at a, a counter and doing, and this is another way you can do it. Lean against the counter and do counter pushups. Now, Obviously, and I'm not going to sit anymore just because I moved the chair out of the way, but um, you can do this sitting down. 30 seconds. And if you need to go lighter, go lighter. 
and you can go way harder. The link I'm gonna put below is gonna have the option to get a set, and you'll wanna get a set, because eventually, like this, this is this will feel too light. But 30 seconds, you're still getting a lot of value, even if it's light. And then the third one, you rest from here, and yeah, and that's all this is, right? I'm doing a decline, and now I'm gonna do an incline. I'm going up, and this might slide up your back a little bit, especially if you get sweaty. Move it back down. And it might not feel perfect, do it anyway. So now I'm going up. And the whole time I'm working on uh, my core, because I'm standing, or if you're doing this sitting in a chair, it's gonna engage your core. This is more full body exercise, that's why it's so much better than just being in the gym on a machine. Nothing wrong with that. Different purpose. My goal here is fighting fitness. I want you to be fighting fit. 30 seconds here, and this is really starting to burn me out. You're gonna feel it when you do it. And then I wanna show you one modification. This is gonna help you because at any time, if you have your, uh, your stick like this, your fighting stick, your cane, your bow, your Joe, your collie stick, someone grabs the middle, puts their hand right here to take it away from you, you're going to shove it into them and twist. And then shove it straight down. So you're gonna push, twist, and down. Push, twist, and down. Now that's a lot of moves at the beginning, so you can just do push, twist, twist, back in. Push, twist, or if you've done that already, add that turn. See how I'm turning my body? And when you do that, it's gonna stick them right on the ground. Push, twist, and down. Then, yeah, thumb out of the way. Bring your hands in. I got one more set before we go under the bum. We go under the bum for the biceps. Now this is for the triceps. Biceps and triceps, not for the beach, so that you can uh, put them on the ground for self-defense. From here, I'm gonna bring it up to my head, and I'm not gonna push down. This is not an ex it's not the same exercise. Okay, cool, uh, so don't, um, find an anchor. I'll, sh I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but bring it up here, elbows in, push straight out. When you go straight out, you can see it fires, and this is really burning by the way. I feel this a lot. Burns out your triceps from your forehead, but think of pushing straight and not, again, not down. See what happens, it just rolls down your body. Now, before I show you the modification, if you're not able to put it around your back, sit down on it, put it under your bum, and curl. So, you're gonna need to go lower again anyway. Yeah, these are amazing. If you start doing these, I promise you, you do these, you throw these in three times a week, you're gonna lean out so much faster, you're gonna develop the strength that you need for self-defense, you're gonna like the way your body looks. Hips back and pull. But by the way, you should like the way your body looks anyway, and if you don't, do something about it, right? Yes, and you can even put these under the chair and loop it back up. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the bum or on the legs. This is one, palms up. The second one, palms down. And I like to bring them in a little bit. And this is gonna work the outside of this, but really work this, giving you that wicked strong grip, right? And thumb, I, thumbs under, I like to keep them out just so I can focus on proper technique. And that's all that is. 30 seconds here and rest. And if you can't do 30 seconds, do 15 seconds. Work up to 30 seconds. And then finally in, it's hard to bring your thumbs out this way, so I don't worry about them, but let your wrist fall down so that you isolate the bicep. Your hands are now together, 30 seconds here. And just two more things before we go. If you're able to, step in the band. The band in the, uh, your cane in the middle, I don't know if you can see, whoa, I ran into some stuff there. Let me go a little lower. Or, you know what, I'll move the camera back. That'll be the smartest way to do it. There we go. I'm running into kettlebells back there. There's one. So, you spread your feet. The more you spread your feet, the more resistance you get. From here, you can curl 
or bring your hands closer together and pull. Now don't bring your elbows up higher than your shoulders, from here to here. And I like to do an explosive motion just to here. This is too much. This puts it in your shoulders, it's gonna hurt. Just bring it to here. Come in a little closer so you can see. Just to here. And again, if you want more resistance, and you can, spread your feet. You can do your curls this way, right? All those different ways, all the different ways you can do your curls. There's, there's no limit. The only limit, of course, is your imagination of what you can do with the cane and your band. Now, let me show you if you don't have the ability. I'm going to hold on, try not to make you sick. I know moving the camera around a lot sometimes can make you nauseous. It does for me anyway. From here, these muscles here, I got some weird angle on the camera. <laughs> there we go. I think my ship's sinking. Um, the pectoral muscles, chest muscles, all those things that punch, uppercut, hook punch, the motions here. We do push-ups like this. We do bench pressing like this, dumbbell presses, however you do them, incline, decline. And so it is, uh, it, uh, until we think about it or we're told, we think that the pectorals do this. What they really do is this, they cross the body. That's why the butterfly machine is so effective. And I've gotten more strength, like wicked knockout power strength, like harder punches. I was punching the bag the other day, went next door, and this guy that I worked with sometimes, I teach him how to box a little bit, or we work on boxing, he knows how to box. We just, I hold mitts for him, we work on some stuff. And he said to me, coach, I heard you over there slamming the bags. And I, I laughed and I said, uh, that was the stick. But it wasn't, it was partly the stick. And then the other part of it were, were the, uh, my uh, punches on the heavy bag. And, and I'm not bragging about myself, I'm just telling you what you can build with this. And this is where I, I got this, Speed, extra speed, like way extra speed and power coming in this way, doing the proper technique from the band. And I'm going to anchor it over here. And you don't have to have a martial arts bag, a floor bag. It just any anchor will do. And you hold it in your palm. Bring your other hand to your center line, which is your spine. And you can go, you want to go from down to up in this motion. And that's gonna work this upper part, and you can feel it as it comes across. I like to put the hand here and bring it in. You can bring it a little higher. Let's see if I can get that up. Either bring the anchor up higher if you can, or sit lower, stand up, and you just bring it straight across this way. And, and, and I can feel with this light band just firing in here, building that muscle in the chest. And if you're vain, like I'm vain, and you want better definition in your chest, this is a great way to get it. And then finally, if you put the anchor higher, and you start with your hand higher, and you bring the other hand down, and pushing down, now you're working on the lower part of your chest. So with the anchor down coming up, that's the upper part, just like um, cables, cables in the gym, if you're familiar with that, but you don't have to be familiar with that. But find an anchor and practice this. If you're not able to do it around your back because of the spine, and start super duper light. Don't go heavy, you don't need a lot. Just a light band, any kind of band will do. And then you just, and you, and you increase resistance by moving away from the anchor and you lessen resistance by moving closer to the anchor. That means if this is too easy, I move over. Now it's harder. I almost thought, I thought it was going to come out and smack me. If it's close, that would have been funny, right? If it were here, I love when stuff like that happens. I want you to see that I make all kinds of mistakes and, and there's no way to do it right. You just do it. You need less resistance, come closer. There's the middle. Uh, from here up and play around with it. You're gonna feel that whole, and then do the other side, obviously, if you can. And you're gonna build a lot of explosive, dynamic knockout power 
because I want every one of your techniques to be able to stop the fight if it can. If you catch them in the right time, whether it's a punch or a punch with a big stick in your hand with a hook on the end, you want to try to end the fight every single strike. And you can do that. You can assist it with some of the bands I just showed you. If you need a pair of the bands, like I said, I'm going to put them in the link below. If you want a fighting cane like this, this is the, uh, the oak one. This one is durable and uh, comes unfinished with a little bit of tongue oil on it. I put oil on mine every couple days to keep uh, feeding the wood. It keeps it flexible, keeps it uh, moist, keeps it alive, right? Or the other cane. Let me show you the other cane real quick. If you are a brand new beginner or in any way, nice, in any way um, injured or need a very lightweight stick, this is your absolute best option. This one is the dojo cane that's made out of rattan and the link is below already. The link below, if you want to go and get one of these or if you're in town, I've got five of them in the corner to sell at a discount. These are very inexpensive. It's made out of rattan, which is the same thing that some of like the Japanese bow is made out of, uh, or not the Japanese, the Chinese long staff is made out of, or um, the uh, Kali stick, our knee sticks. And so when you strike, it's extremely fast. It does everything the other cane does, but it's really, really light. This is a great starter cane. I go back and forth, train between the two canes, and you're able to do all the techniques with this cane. Again, the link's below. This is rattan. That's why it flexes a little bit. Now, can you use this as a walking cane? A thousand percent, yes, absolutely. Can you do all the same things? Are you allowed to take this on the plane? Yes. Are you allowed to take it on the train? Yes. I started to say this, and I think I forgot. HIPAA laws. In the United States, HIPAA laws, uh, the HIPAA law laws, I guess it's a group of laws, say that you're not allowed to ask me to prove that I need this. It, the HIPAA laws are about patient privacy as a right of, as an American citizen. And then the Americans with Disabilities Act is a much older law, which is this says, you know, the bathrooms have to be so wide. They have to have the sink so low. You have to have bars to get up and out. The door has to be so wide. You have to have, you know, if you have steps, you also have to have an elevator. All those laws that protect people who are disabled also allow you to carry this everywhere and anywhere you go. So the two together, because ADA says, you must allow me to come into your store, your library, your school, your um, government building, through TSA, onto the subway, and you're, you have to let me carry my cane. And the second law, the HIPAA laws say that you can't ask me to prove, show you some doctor's note or something. I don't even know what it would be. But there's no way that you can't even ask me, do you really need that cane? What do you need that cane for? And if they ask you that, you can inform them. You're not allowed to ask me that. Um, if you want, there's a card, uh, Keith Melton at canemasters.com. He sells a pocket card that looks just, it's made out of the same stuff that um, uh, driver's license are made out of. So it's durable, it'll never break. You stick that in your wallet, your purse, your pocket while you're carrying this. Someone asks you, you say, hold on. You pull it out and you say, oh, look, read this. This says right here exactly which statutes and laws say that you're not allowed to ask me about my cane. So those two laws make this the most effective self-defense tool you can possibly ever carry because you can take it everywhere. Oh, man. You can st still practice. Practice with what you've got. That's a bummer. Yeah, his canes are awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the politics. I'm just so tired of a mess. I'm just so glad I can make these videos in my own space with the door locked and the, the closed sign on so that nobody has to worry about whether I got a mask or not. And then when I'm done, before my classes start tonight, because I have classes tonight, I will disinfect every inch of this place and mop the floors with bleach. But I've always done that because I don't want you getting ringworm on your face if we're doing something on the ground. So we, we were, I was paying attention to safety a long time ago and I don't like smudge marks in the window and I don't, yeah, you did. I, I don't have this stuff here. So for me, I love cleaning anyway. 
It's like moving meditation. It helps me focus my mind when I start mopping the floor and getting in there, pretending that I was a young Marine back in the barracks. And they're like, tomorrow's field day. We're going to, or today's field day. Tomorrow is inspection. And if you don't pass inspection, you don't get liberty. And I'm in there scrolling, scrolling, because I don't want to get off that post or that base and go do something fun. Anyway, if you need one of these canes, it's in the link below. This is the rattan, super lightweight. You can use anything. And, you know, put the purple heart cane uh, to the side for a little bit. Practice this, this one. Maybe we get back there. Yeah, I was, I was an Army National Guard, too. I love them both. I love the military. And if you served, I'm going to say thank you for your service. People say to me, thank you for your service. And I, was, and I heard someone else say it a long time ago, so I started saying it. Thank you for letting me serve because I loved it. And I hope you loved it, too. I'll see you guys in a little bit.